He sent me like a voice memo at like three in the morning or something. It was like, Pedro, wow. Wow. <laughs> How do you know this is the right path for you? When it's like, I'm exhausted, like this was last night. I was sitting there, I had started working at what, like 9.30 in the morning, which is so late for an artist, let me, <laughs> let me just say. Uh, 9.30 in the morning, uh, I started working. It was like, I think it was like 1.30 at night, like I realized, I was like, where am I? I didn't like think, I was just, you know, working and editing and little promos for the movie and like thinking about other script ideas and doing it all. Uh, those are the moments I'm reminded of where I'm like, oh, I will never do anything else other than like create. Um, call it like time travel moments, <laughs> you know, where you're just doing like 16 hour days and um, whether you feel like crap or not, uh, you wake up the next day and do it again. That's how I know. Do the days tend to blend in to one another? For sure. If I didn't travel so much, I would I probably still think I'm like 19. Uh, <laughs> like, I feel like it's good seasonal chapters of being like, ah, when I went to New York, that was July, you know? Um, yeah. Would you say you're obsessed with storytelling? I would, I would. I think I'm so obsessed with storytelling, I can't choose just one specific field in storytelling. And um, I never will. <laughs> what makes you obsessed? I think there's a lot of adventures in my own life um, that I think are just too good not to share. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I've I've had a fun I've had a fun life, um, and whether it's those specific adventures, I think there's moments that can connect. Uh, people and me to people uh, that are worth sharing, you know? And I, I think the coolest part about making movies is that it's brought me so much closer to my friends, like talking about each other's movies or talking about someone else's movies. It's always a great way to just communicate and relate and, and feel and um, yeah. I've gotten way closer to my family, like just by doing this movie and I've changed my mind about you know, my relationship with my family like a million times like throughout this movie. Um, and I probably would have never had those conversations till the day that me and all of my family are dead. Like I would have never talked about some of the stuff that I have because of movies. Did they know you were writing the script with Fabio? Yes, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I can't remember when, oh no, yeah, yeah. So Fabio and I were, we're talking about shooting, uh, shooting some ideas like that could be doable for us. Um, shot several shorts together and that's some <laughs> really dumb sketch comedy stuff. Uh, that some of it I still think is funny, <laughs> uh, but um, we were trying to figure out what resources we could take in our lives and, and make something out of it. And apartments were one of those things. So we started talking about a lot of uh, apartment ideas. And uh, Fabio didn't know it at the time, but my dad had, uh, had lung cancer uh, when I was like 14. And I, was, I think it was like 23 or 24 when he started talking about my dead dad, maybe 23. Um, and so he, ne he never knew about any of that. And I started talking about, oh, my dad had lung cancer. He called me, I hadn't seen him in years. Like he was on, in Peru, I was in Qatar. Uh, he had said, hey man. Uh, and I was like shocked he was even calling in the first place. And I was like, hey, What's up? <laughs> <You> <laughs> right, <know>? uh -huh. <laughs> and he's like, nothing much. Uh, I'm dying and uh, I have a month left to live. And I was like, what? Um, and he told me that he had an apartment in Peru uh, that I had no idea even existed. Um, kind of a shabby, <laughs> crumply apartment. Uh, and uh, that at the time, uh, he said, your name's gonna be put on it because I'm not gonna last much longer and you're gonna have to manage it. And I was 14, totally unqualified. I didn't even know where it was or even really speak <laughs> great enough Spanish to manage that. Um, and so uh, 
luckily in real life, he actually had his lung removed, uh, surgically removed, he had lung cancer and survived by like a sliver of fate. So I went on for like two, three months being like, oh, my dad's dead. Like my dad's dead. I'm an apartment manager now. <laughs> Uh, you know, life was on its head for sure. And um, luckily throughout that experience, like later on when I, when I was um, becoming a little bit more of an adult, I moved to Peru and got to spend a lot of time with him and uh, sort of get closer in that way. And, uh, and so <laughs> our apartment ideas, the low budget kind of resource filmmaking and that idea sort of met. Um, and uh, yeah. It's really special and it's weird because people usually think like my dad's dead rightfully so but he's actually still alive <laughs> he's actually still alive uh we don't really communicate in a uh, traditional way as often and he's a thick peruvian accent you know he lives in another world for sure um but uh, he actually saw the movie like a month ago he knew i was making a movie i don't think he knew exactly that it was kind of greatly inspired uh, by him and um, and like I kind of mentioned it, it brought us closer together I think there was a lot of he sent me like a voice memo at like three in the morning or something it was like Pedro wow wow <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I love you wow you know <laughs> it's just like it's the greatest voice memo ever <laughs> you know? oh, that's like, great. you know uh, and um, yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about it more. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, because some people might be like, you know, you're, you're talking about family things and maybe it's too close for them to see. And yeah. So that's that's awesome that you had that yeah, experience. Yeah. That was a cool moment for sure. Did you envision yourself as this like manager, at, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like I can't even manage myself. I still can't. <laughs> uh, let alone an apartment. My lord. Uh, yeah. Nope. <laughs> I would love to see a fourteen-year-old coming to collect late rent. Yeah, that'd be, yeah, that'd be yeah. awesome. Good That's... luck with that. <laughs> yeah. Not sure how well that would go over, but right. Um... <laughs> yeah. I think I think too. Just to add on to that, making movies like that that are kind of personal in that way. The cool thing about it is that they can mean so much more as time goes on. Like, you know, I look back at some of the movie and I'm like, oh, that, that's a line I wrote or something where I'm like, well, oh, changed my mind about that, you know. But like that movie's gonna be really special, I think, in five years and in 10 years and in 20 years, you know. Um, and I can't wait to show my kids one day that movie, you know? Or like my sister, my si I don't think my sister's seen the movie yet. She's 19 and like was even kind of, I think more distant from my dad at the time because um, they got divorced when I was young. So she was like really young. And uh, I can't wait till she sees it. And like, you know, I don't know if she'll like totally get it, but like, you know. Watch it, Marietta. <laughs> Did she live in Qatar with you? She, yeah, she lived in Qatar with me. So uh, we were in Seattle. She was born in Seattle. Then me and my sister, my mom and stepdad actually uh, moved to Qatar. And then I split up from them and moved to Peru halfway through high school. And then, yeah, then my sister moved to Germany with my mom and then China with my mom. And now my mom's in Brazil. Uh, she's a teacher and just gets all these cool opportunities to teach across the world. So oh, wow. that's how I kind of got roped into the world. Very cool. Yeah. You said that you had so many fun experiences that you wanted to share them in stories. Is there someone's life that you look at where you've watched their biopic and you think, wow, like Hunter S. Thompson or somebody where you're just like, if I could have lived that life, may yeah. or may not have been good who knows but yeah I mean you know what's so funny about that like I, I've sort of I'm starting to change my perspective on this and we talked about this a little bit with like Seattle and these great artists that may have not stuck around because of whatever reason drugs or or just themselves um, and I think it's funny because immediately when you say that like most of the people I'm like I look up to are dead which is crazy, like prematurely, like like Heath Ledger or, you know, uh, I mean, like 
you know, Kurt Cobain for various reasons, uh, which is just so interesting that I think, I don't know if this is everyone, but I know a lot of young people who idolize people who've died young. Um, and maybe there's, they kind of, I think I was vicariously like living through their wild life and, and, and the fact that they're great artists, like, like Heath Ledger, for example. There's a documentary, I think it's called I Am Heath. Uh, I should know the title because I've seen it like 20 times, like literally. I went through a phase where it was just like on and I was like writing, like uh, just constantly. Um, so I don't know why that is. Um, and I think there's something to that. It's almost weird just about humans. Um, but the older I get, the more I realize there's definitely a balance, you know? Um, and I think it's almost kind of mm, a little questionable to, to blindly, I mean, idolize anyone, but let alone like these bright burning souls, you know, uh, without really asking yourself like, damn, is everything that they've gone through worth living like that, you know? I don't know. Yeah, I remember when I turned 27, someone said, like, oh, I hope you don't join the 27 Club. And I kind of went down this rabbit hole of, like, researching, and I was like, oh, wow, you know, I mean, Janis Joplin, like, so many different people. Yeah. Amy Winehouse, well, at that time, she wasn't famous. But, yeah, you know, yeah. just different people. And you go, you, you, it's easy to see their life as, like, um, I don't even know the word for it. It's tragic and it's beautiful, but at the same time, yeah. it's, it's very sad. Yeah, no, um, it's very... Rock star esque, and I mean even myself, like, just I, maybe this is the Seattle in me or or the crazy experiences I've gone through. There was definitely like probably from like the age of nineteen to maybe like twenty two, I was like, yeah, you know, kind of saying it jokingly, but like, yeah, I'll probably be part of the twenty seven club or whatever. You know, like, why would I say that? <laughs> you know, like that's horrible. Like, uh. Yeah, and now I'm 26, <laughs> so I'm like, oh God, no. Oh I, no, you know, okay, yeah, yeah. gosh, why did I bring yeah. this up? I'm sorry, uh, this yeah. is weird that we went here, okay. No, <laughs> no, no, it's, it's interesting to me, <laughs> like it's it's so weird, right? I mean like, you know, uh, so it's important, but like I said, it's important to look at like the, the positive in those people's lives and also like, like how'd they feel and like what, what was wrong, you know, in those moments too, you know, cause everyone goes through it. Like everyone thinks about like crazy <laughs> shit like that, you know, like the 27 club or, or dying young or uh, any of that. And I think that's why art's so cool because it just like, you know, breaks through a lot of that and forces you to talk about it. Um, and that's why I think it's one of the most important things on the planet. Sure, and but the thing is it, it seems cool because there's this legacy, but not everybody's going to be Jim Morrison and, and your life is done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and so, yeah. and I think we get easily seduced by that. And right, it's, right. It's, yeah. You know. no, and I say it jokingly, but I'm like, I haven't done that much stuff. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> but I mean, like, you know, like, yeah, it's, no. Sure. No, it, I think uh, living a long and uh, wise life is very underrated, for That's sure. That's true. For sure. Yeah.